Hello artists, welcome back. We are in the second of a video which is helping us to sculpt magical beasts, an art project in sculpture as we're all staying at home after uh, staying at home with the coronavirus and you know even if we stay at home any other time. Um, if you haven't had a chance to watch the introductory video, I recommend that you pause this video, go back and watch the introductory video. It's going to get you better prepared with a lot of good creative ideas to get going. But in this video, we're going to actually physically build the armature. That's the underlying structure of our sculpture. And you're going to need a couple of materials. You're going to need your masking tape right here. And you're going to need your aluminum foil right here. And maybe, just maybe, you're going to need some scissors. Sometimes these can really be helpful. This is the armature I've started on. I showed it in the first video. And this is not the finished sculpture. This is just the armature. It's the underlying support structure of my sculpture, just like our bones are the underlying support structure of our body. Without them, we'd all flop down. We wouldn't be able to sit upright. So armatures are really important in sculpture. So how do I make my armature? If you're ready, you've got an idea. You know what kind of beast you want to make. So to get started, you're going to take a piece of aluminum foil. Make it like this big. That's a little, about 14 inches or so. And you're going to tear it off. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to recreate the beast that I have right here. This is a magical swan, by the way. And the wings are going to be beautiful insect wings. All right. So... I have a really important tip to share with you. We're going to be smushing this aluminum foil up to make our armature. But when you do this, folks, you don't want to start smushing and squeezing too tightly. You want to be light and delicate as a butterfly. So I'm going to start squishing my foil to get it in the shape of the body of my sculpture right here. Okay? That's what I'm going to start squishing it to do. So watch. I'm going to hold the foil up so you can see. And I'm going to lightly, lightly, gently, easily, delicate little squeezes. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lightly squeeze it. What I'm not going to do is this. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Look, I've got this shrunken earthworm. Now, if I wanted to make a shrunken earthworm sculpture, I'm all set. Maybe I will save this and turn it into something. But this is not the shape that I wanted for my armature. So let's put that to one side and try again. It's probably, folks, the most common mistake, squeezing the foil too hard. Let's get a fresh piece. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a new piece of foil, and I'm going to, with my light butterfly squeezes, maybe you want to practice with your hand doing a little bit of light squeezing like that. I'm going to lightly, gently, easily squeeze and shape my sculpture. It's barely anything at all. It looks almost like a giant sweet potato, doesn't it? And I'm going to stop now. I'm going to put it down and get out the masking tape. I'll get out a couple of pieces so I have them to the ready. And with my sculpture, still being careful not to squish it, I'm just going to lay some tape on it. Now, you might need the help of a grown-up on this, depending on how old you are, especially if you're younger than third grade. This can get a little tricky, but it's absolutely doable. You just put the tape on, and you rub it on, and you get more and more tape. Use a lot of tape. It won't matter because remember, this isn't what the sculpture is going to look like. This is just the armature. So it's going to look kind of like a raw work in process, and it really won't look a whole lot like a bird. I think I'm going to need to get some tape under here. So let me add a big piece just right along the bottom of my sculpture. There we go. Okie dokie. I think that's ready for me to go ahead and keep on going. So now I'm going to get another piece of aluminum foil and I'm going to start shaping the neck. And for this, I am going to squeeze my foil a little bit more snugly and I'm just adding a big piece along the bottom of my sculpture, twisting, shaping, because, you know, a swan's got a skinnier neck. So this is a point where I might want to get a little skinny. And now let's tape that in place. Let me get my tape. So whatever your creature is, you're going to do the same thing. A big, loosely squeezed piece of foil for the main body parts. If you're doing a bear, say, you might want to start with the center of the body and then go on to the legs. And depending on the size and shape of those legs, you might need to use that light butterfly squeezing technique 
or get a little more detail. That's depending <coughs> completely on your sculpture. It's up to you and what your sculpture needs. Every artist's work is going to be a little different, so everything falls for slightly different technique. Okie dokie, I'm taping away here. I've got it all taped. That looks pretty good. And this is a really good point to think about that word we talked about in the first video, which is gesture, okay? How things move. Remember, I can have a very upright gesture. I can have a very relaxed gesture. But I want to think about that with my animal. So just looking at my swan, I can start shaping my foil. My swan's head can be up like this. It could be reaching out like that. And all of those little decisions about how I want my animal to sit, maybe I could turn his neck around. Ooh, that's kind of cool. That's a different gesture right there. It's up to me. But I want to think about the gesture my animal has. Now, looking at my swan right now, or at least this one, I've got a big dip in here. I don't think I want that big dip, so I'm going to put some foil there. Let me tear off a little bit more. And for this, I'm going to get a smaller piece. I don't need something really big because that's just a small spot. Again, oops, dropped it. I'm scrunching it up pretty lightly. And I'm just going to stick it where I think I need to fill in that gap on the body of my swan. And then I'm going to tape it in place. Now, for things like wings, let's get this taped in place first. There we go. For long, skinny things, you don't want to take, like, and by long skinny things, if we go back to the first animal that I made, I made these wings. And they're pretty big, skinny forms. They extend a long way off of my sculpture. I don't want to take just one piece of foil and then cut it out like this. You know, okay, here's my wing shape. Here's one piece of foil, and I'm just going to cut it out. And then with this one single piece of foil, stick it on my sculpture. I do not want to do that. Why? It's going to be too flimsy. It's going to flop all around. It's just not going to work. So for this next step, I need to take a piece of foil. You know, maybe it's smaller. And I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it again. So now I've got this nice, fat, thick piece of foil. And I can even just think of my wing shape and keep folding it into that shape. Or at this point, I can also use my scissors if I need to trim or cut it. But this is actually getting kind of close to what I need, at least in terms of the shape. Now, I don't know if it's uh, a little too big. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me turn my swan around. I'm learning about how to use this video. It seems like everything's backward. That is a pretty big wing for my swan. So I'm going to take my scissors and trim it just a little bit. And people, this is all we do. So I'm trimming away now at my swan wing. There we go. Oop. It's going to fall on the computer at some point. There. That looks a lot more like it. And now I go back to my masking tape. I'm going to put my tape on, hold my wing up here. And again, you might need to get a grown-up to help you. That is up to you. And I put my wing on. I'll put a piece of tape here on the bottom. So I attached it right there. And now I get another piece of tape and I'm gonna, whoop, it's flopping over. So holding it with my hand, I go and now I'm putting some tape on the inside. And now folks, I'm gonna take tape and I'm gonna wrap tape all around my wing to make it sturdy. So to recap, you're gonna start building your armature by foil. You're going to lightly scrunch the foil for the main parts of your sculpture. You don't want to get squeezing it too hard or too heavy. That's just not going to work so well. So you want to keep your scrunching of your foil pretty light and delicate to start. The sculpture is going to get smaller as you work. Another thing you want to think about is really using a lot of tape. Don't worry about using too much. Remember, we're not going to see this when the sculpture is finished. And finally, I want to warn you about an important point. Make sure you work pretty big. I would suggest that you make your sculpture about the height from your elbow to your wrist. So my swan is not quite that size, but it's pretty close. If I lay him down lengthwise, you don't want the sculpture to be too teeny weeny. It makes it really hard to paper mache. So lightly scrunched foil, work large, elbow to wrist in size, that'll help you. Use plenty of tape for things like wings, Fold foil over. 
I'm going to let you go and start building your armature, and in the next video, we'll talk about how you paper mache it. Good luck!